I still remember the look on his face after that one. The old world's finished, but the new world's just getting started. Folks voyaged across the boundless sea to found Ceylandia. It was good living here for a while. Fetching fizz is like a mouthful of nails, but the benefits are worth it. A lot of things need fixing up in this world, and we can start right here. Couples used to walk the sundown path. Kid ain't here for pleasure, though. But then... Somebody gets to the core before the kid. The floor starts giving way under the lightest step. A single panic squirt could bring the whole place down. So could a reckless kid for that matter. Fragments of the old world rain from the sky. Thinks twice about risking his eye for him. Well, the path ain't exactly open to visitors no more. Security's all fired up. Quick and careful is the only way to go. See, the path was intended for leisurely strolling and such. Not so much for noise and tomfoolery. Spyglass, like the ones they'd use to search the stars. Air travel always was an iffy proposition. The calamity changed everything, even when the wind blows.
Well, if we mastered the winds in the old days, we can do it again. But the question is... Who else could have taken the core? live munitions down the path. Find time to find them. He's wires to toss those things plenty far away. Gas fellas need some shut eye from time to time. They get real cranky when you wake them up. In all this toil, Kid keeps coming back to an overwhelming question. Who else could have survived the calamity? So he didn't find the core that time, but that ain't about to stop us. We could always see the stars, we just never could reach them, no matter how high we build. Dead welcome him with open arms. The calamity took everybody after all. Kid sees it plain, frozen faces all around. You don't much care to see him, not like this. These folks never saw the calamity coming, but someone did. Someone close. Someone who ain't like Mr. Beckley and his kindly wife. It was someone like him. It sees him there agape, in the flesh. It's a snag or two trying to get to him. He ain't about to stop, no matter what. He's got so many questions after all.
just ain't got time for answers. The Tundra Brothers didn't make it. They never saw what it was like beyond the walls. Nor did the Bird Boy didn't make it. The Jawsons, they didn't make it. Grady Sr., Grady Jr., they didn't make it. But him, he survived. Kid finds proof enough that man ain't from around here. Just think, without that man, we wouldn't be here right now, would we? The core survived as well. He does what he has to do. And then, what do you say to a man who's seen too much? Kid hasn't a clue, but he says this. We have to go, please. He's a proper gentleman, that man. His name is Zolf. No hiding, he's an Ura. Folks like him ain't never been a common sight in Ceylandia. He's relieved to see a living face or two. The kid and I introduce ourselves in kind. Both to him and to each other for the first time. For Zolf, Ceylandia was like a second home. He's real worried about his first home, too. Far to the east. We all lost loved ones in the calamity, he says. I don't know how I'm gonna go on without mine. Zolf offers to help me plot the skyways for the kid. At least the calamity hasn't touched the stars, he says. He was born in the Tazzle Terminals. The Ura sent him on a mission of peace to our city, and he's lived here ever since. We fought the Ura decades ago, but that was then. Things are different between us now. The cores, they remember. That's why this place is coming together. That's why things are gonna be all right. Well, look what we have here. The memorial. Here yeah, kid can pay respect to the old world and earn it in kind. The valediction. Just another one of my sketches. Nothing more. Words can't express what happened, but they're all I got. down a couple more cores near the edge of the city.
No use praying to the gods these days. No time for it either. Pith Orchard. Place is a dead end in more ways than one. Folks used to make pilgrimage here to pay their respects to Pith, the bull. Well, the gods are long gone now, and the Orchard Core is long gone too. <laughs> Gods don't care about trinkets, but the kid ain't no god. Pith stood for something once. Something real. In time, though, the bull stopped being a symbol and started being decoration. He couldn't even save his loyal subjects. Piff makes a decent scarecrow at least. Then Biff lights up like a rodeo. Ain't easy punching through his hide. Kid breaks him to bits. Must have been guarding that shrine. So what'll it be? Invoke the gods, or tell them off? Piv. Kid decides to press his luck. If the gods are alive, they must be plenty sore. Kid ain't never seen windbags that quick. Maybe old Pith put a scare in him. This is Pith's trial, and he's richer for it. 
Kid ain't found a core, but least he found Zolf's precious shrine. Now we can build a shrine of our own, though I got some alternatives in mind. Zolf doesn't touch the thing. Says the god of commotion is no children's toy. Turn him round and round all you like. Pith's still gonna be ugly. That's Cinderbrick Fort, where the marshals used to watch over the city. There's only one way to Cinderbrick Fort. The hard way. Sure, the city marshals may be gone. But now the force crawling with windbags. The calamity was mercy for normal force. The windbags ain't so lucky. They've been left to freeze, or starve, or face the kid. Bags young and old keep fighting for the fort. left the kid a parting gift. Something the windbags just can't handle. Something that'll punch clean through their greasy hides. Windbags ain't much different from normal folks. 
All they want is a warm place to stay and a decent meal. but the kids sure can. As for the windbags, Cinder Brick gave them enough heat and metal to munch on for a while. Well, the fort ain't theirs by right. Can't blame them for wanting it, though. So many of those sorry things hold up inside that old fort. and everything in sight with that new fangled musket.
Jared is plain gone haywire. Windbags gummed up the works. Afraid of getting burned. They trapped the kid in the middle of the fort's parade grounds. Something to gain, and only their sorry hides to lose. Kid takes that, Glutus. Or maybe it was Glandon. Marshall's badge, but not like this. The Skyway is a welcome sight after all that. And now ain't nothing left for nobody down at Cinderbrick Fort. Kid shows up just as Ulf's telling me about his own journey to the city. The marshals seem like good men, he says. They treated him with dignity. Zolf brought his antique smoking pipe all the way from the terminals. Seems the only thing the calamity saved for Zolf was his smoking pipe. Poor kid collapses after just one drag. <laughs> 